Today we're going to be go talking about and going over how to perform a comprehensive inspection of the lodge property. We're going to be doing a roof inspection and an inspection of the interior. All right, so let's get started. When arriving at the property, you want to be considerate as to where you park your vehicle. Do not want to park in the driveway. Do not want to block the driveway. You do not want to park on the grass or landscaping of the insured. And you definitely do not want to block the fire hydrant. Let's talk about the dress code. As an insurance professional, you want to dress for success. You want to always wear a shirt with a collar. Um, we recommend water wicking shirts, no open toed shoes, no jeans, no denims, um, no political or sport affiliated or religious branding on your clothing, and try to make sure you wear the appropriate shoes for climbing roofs, which are kooka bars or similar shoes that have treads that's good enough to keep you from falling off the roof. Um, if you choose kooka paws, they do offer. Um, a boot covering called booties. Well, at least that's what I call them. That's available on their website. Now we want to talk about photo documentation and its order. Uh, we're going to talk about the order that your photos should be in. The very first photo that we want you to take is going to be a photo of your loss address. That photo is going to include the address of the loss location with your ID card or business card that has your license number on it. In the state of Florida, it is not required. Second photo that we will be taking is going to be the front elevation. We want to make sure in this photo, that in every elevation photo, actually, that you're able to get from corner to corner on your photo as best as possible. And before you even speak to the insured, you want to make sure you take these two photos just in case the insured declines you taking any additional photos of the lost property. Here's an example of the conversation that you can have or similar with the insured. Hello, my name is Ashley Severe. I'm the insurance adjuster. We spoke on the phone in regards to our inspection today so what I would like to do today I would like to be able to go around and inspect the outside of the home the exterior and take some photo documentations of the exterior do I have full access to your property are there any locked fences on the property do you have any pets on the property that I need to be aware of if so if can you please bring your pets inside or put them away in a cage Thank you, and after I'm done inspecting the perimeter of the home, I'm going to climb the roof, and I'm going to inspect your roof and take some photo documentations of the roof. When I'm done, I will come down and I'll knock on your door and we can inspect the inside of your home. You can show me where the, the areas that were affected by the storm. All right, great. I'll see you soon. When you inquire about their pets, please be as courteous as possible. Now during our inspection you want to constantly be scanning for damages. You want to start after you've taken a photo of the elevation. You want to approach that elevation and actively scan for damages. You want to start at the top from the gutters, the fascia, soffit, windows, doors, walls, and siding. You want to make sure that you check if there is any exterior lightings. Um, like coach lighting that may be on the side of the garage door or post lighting that's out in the yard. You want to make sure you inspect those for damages. You want to pay attention to the garage door um, for damages as well since it's a huge door. A lot of times it may be hit by debris or hell.
As you inspect the elevations, if there's any equipment on the lost property, such as air conditioning, condenser units, you want to make sure you photograph the condenser unit and their labels, along with any other equipment. Photo you want to take is your rear photo, and a lot of times, when you go to the rear, there are underwriting concerns that you want to make note of. If there is a trampoline on the lost property, make sure that you take a photo of the trampoline and make note of that in your report. There may be an underwriting referral. And the reason for that is that trampolines come with liability because the possibility of the insured or their children or the neighbors or visitor getting hurt from a trampoline. That increases the risk on the property. As you photo document the property, you want to make sure that you document any abnormalities. In this photo here, you see there's a do door, is patio door or family room door is boarded up. You want to make sure you document that as well. So you're looking for storm created damage and you're also looking for damage that's existing or pre-existing. You want to make sure you document it. The fifth photo that we want to be taking is going to be the left elevation. Again, if there's any other equipment on the property, make sure that you take it at this time. And when you get back to your desk, you just reorganize your photos. Make sure your photo order follows the order that's stated in this video and you'll just move around the the equipment photos and damage photos. Now we want to talk about setting up your ladder. Prior to setting up your ladder to be able to climb the roof, you want to pay attention to the slope that you decide to pick. Make sure that there are no power masses or power cords coming from the power pole to the home on the slope that you choose. If there is the existence of a power pole line coming into the house, please choose another slope. Just stay off that, that elevation and that slope completely when it comes to setting up your ladder. You want to make sure that your ladder is set up three feet above the roof line. And then we're going to take photo number six, your ladder access. Now, before we go any further, we want to talk about the importance of ladder safety. Um, we're going to be covering a couple things here. One thing you want to be sure is that you do not learn ladder safety on the fly. The most dangerous part of climbing a roof or a roof inspection will be at the top of the ladder where you go to get off the ladder and mount onto the roof. And also when you go to get back on your ladder to be able to climb down from the roof. This is where most accidents happen in climbing the roof. So you want to make sure that you set up your ladder in a way that is safe and will provide the right amount of safety for you to be able to come climb up the roof and be able to come down from climbing the roof. Let's talk about the seven points of safety when climbing a ladder. Number one, you want to make sure, as stated earlier, you want to extend the ladder three feet above the surface. And you want to make sure that there is a rung that's either even with the roof plane or just below the roof plane. Never get off of a ladder or step on a rung that's above the roof plane that changes the entire pendulum of that ladder and will cause that ladder to kick out from underneath you. So be careful when you're mounting the roof. Do not step on the rung that is above the roof plane. Number two, tie off your ladder at the top when possible. You may want to use a ladder lock especially if it's attached if you're climbing and the ladder is resting on a gutter or use a little ladder helper. Step number three, three point contact at all times when climbing the ladder. You want to always make sure that you have three points of contact when climbing the ladder. 
Number four, never use a ladder if it has a broken rung or if the ladder is damaged in any way. Number five, to make sure that you achieve the proper angle for climbing the ladder, you wanna use the four to one ratio. For every four feet in height from the ground to the soffit of the roof, you wanna put the ladder one foot back from the actual structure. Number six, secure your ladder at the bottom. As much as possible, you wanna make sure when setting up your ladder that you set up your ladder either in grass, dirt, or mulch. As much as possible, try to stay away from setting up your ladder on concrete, brick, or wood decking. Um, you wanna make sure that the bottom of your ladder is secure. When setting up on concrete, brick, or wood decking, um, it has a higher possibility for your ladder to be able to move when, when climbing up a roof. Um, if you have to set it up on concrete, brick, or wood decking, try to set it up in a way that the bottom is secure, whether using a brace or something to secure your ladder at the bottom. And number seven, never carry tools or materials while climbing the ladder. Okay, always make sure you have a tool belt where you can secure all your tools that you're gonna be needed to perform your inspection or a clipboard. Um, try to see if you can attach your clipboard to your tool belt. Um, always make sure that your hands are free. And of course, as stated before, earlier in this video, you wanna make sure that you do have the proper shoes for climbing the roof. We highly recommend wearing Cougar Paws. They have a tread at the bottom or a sole at the bottom of the boot that increases your ability to adhere to the roof while climbing. The next photo that we want to take now is a photo of the drip edge and gutter profile. That would be photo number seven. Okay guys, we're back at it. I want to try one more time to see if you guys can hear me. Can, you buy, can anybody confirm that my audio is better? It looks like the lagging is gone, but let's see about the audio. <clears throat> I'm going to send out a text. How is the audio? You can go ahead and ask them if they can't hear me, Robert. Okay. Oh, no, they can hear you now. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it is. All right, yeah. awesome. So um, we started out this um, podcast earlier. I know how people said, um, don't mock small beginnings. You know, we're, in field, we're field adjusters. We're not technical savvy guys. We try to do what we can and um, try to put out the best product as possible. And unfortunately, between the beginning of this podcast and yesterday, I mean, technical difficulties has been our nemesis. All right. So I appreciate Robert for holding it down, even though you guys couldn't hear me. But um, I want to jump right into it. So in the beginning, we started off with talking about what's the most important skill for a field adjuster. Um, earlier, when I posted it in social media, someone suggested that the fee schedule is the most important thing. And immediately, I thought about a clip from John Wick when um, they put a hit out on his life for $14 million. And there was this guy that caught up with him at the library. And the deadline was at 6 o'clock. But he showed up like 5, 10 minutes early. And he's like, look, we might as well get this started. And John Wick basically said, what's the use if you gain $14 million and you're not able to spend it? So what's the use of having the best fee schedule out there but you're not able to spend it. You're not able to bring it home, provide for your family, and enjoy a very good life 
with it. So fee schedule is not at the top of the list of the most important thing for a field adjuster. In our opinion, I think ladder safety is. What do you think, Robert? Definitely think that ladder safety is more important. You want to make sure you come home to your loved ones, that's for sure. Uh, so, and then the fee schedule, like I said earlier, it's a bonus. So uh, ladder safety is number one on my list as well. Okay. Now I want to share some statistics with you guys. Um, and I found this on the OSHA website. A couple things I want to share. Give me a second. I'm going to trans. I'm transitioning now. Okay, good. The lag is still not there, so awesome. So we're talking about ladder safety, and I'm going to read some statistics. In 2020 alone, there was 161 fatalities due to a ladder. All right, now keep in mind, this is ladder ownership. You are cutting in and out, Ashley. They had mentioned you're cutting in and out. Okay. How about right now? Can you hear me okay? Hi. Right. Go ahead and talk. All right. So, ladder safety is the number one priority and should be the number one priority in the life of a field adjuster. Because last year alone, I know that in South Florida, there were at least two fatalities for insurance adjusters. Okay, at least two. And that was in South Florida, and there was one in North Carolina. And I'm sure you guys have heard stories of guys falling off the ladder, walking off of a roof, and not being able to go back home. Or they survive it, and they're in bad shape. I remember you started to share, Robert, about one adjuster funeral that you went to. Uh, yeah, one adjuster funeral that I went to, uh, it was a lady, it was a, a she, um, had did a double pull. It doesn't mean that um, you can't do a double pull. You just got to make sure you're doing it safely. Uh, she had put herself on a dormer um, and got up to the second floor and then fell and hit the roof and then fell off to the second, first floor uh, onto the ground. So... You definitely got to be very careful. Now, I don't recommend double pulls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't recommend double pulls, uh, but uh, sometimes that uh, if need be, if it's a flat roof in the back, definitely you can try it uh, and do it because a lot of flat roofs in the back in Florida or even in, in several states is a 112. Uh, but you still got to be very, very careful. Always have somebody with you to help with that. That's correct. Now, most, most insurance carriers will warn you against a double pull. I, I am not a fan of it. Reason, and, um, and reason being, i tell you what. Before I share, explain to them what a double pull is, Robert, before I go to share. Double, if you guys don't know what a double pull is, a double pull is when you get on uh, if it's a one-story house, you're getting on the one-story house. That's just a single pull because it's one-story house. You put your ladder against the eave, get up on top, then you're onto, the, onto your roof. A double pull is basically you're getting on the same roof, and there is another roof, which is a two-story roof, climbing on top of that one, putting your ladder on top of the first story, climbing up to the second story. That is considered a double pull. Don't recommend it uh, at all, but you know there are some adjusters who do double pulls, 
but I don't recommend it without having somebody with a two-story ladder. That's correct. And one of my main reasons why I don't recommend it, because let's say the ladder falls down while you're climbing the second portion of that roof. How are you going to get down? You know? That's one of the scariest things. You're going to have to end up calling the fire department to come out and get you. And I don't know anything more embarrassing for the fire department to come get you off of a roof. All right? So let me ask you. You'll get charged for it. Say that again? And you'll get charged for it sometimes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, whose responsibility do you think it is for our safety when it comes to ladder safety? We already established it's the most important thing because if you can't make it home in one piece, I mean, it kind of destroys the entire career. You want, I mean, it only takes one mistake. We can't even afford to make that one mistake. So whose responsibility is it? I'll let you t um, share a little bit on that, Robert, and then I'll talk about the situation in Mississippi. Well, the responsibility for ladder safety, it's not the homeowners and it's uh, not the contractor. It's you yourself. You're the one who's climbing up the ladder. You're the one who's risking your uh, life to get up on top of the second story or a steep roof or what have you. It's your responsibility to make it home to your family. So you make sure when somebody says, go ahead and use my ladder, mm -hmm. you wanna make sure that you're safe. No matter what ladder you use, you wanna make sure that you're safe before you get up on top of the ladder, making sure you use the proper uh, mechanisms, which is you know gutter guards to where you can go ahead and get a, uh, a clamp for the soffit um, and your fascia boards. There are clamps that you can buy, but you, overall, you are the one who is responsible for your ladder safety. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, at the end of the day, we have to remember that we're independent contractors, not only with the insurance carrier, but also with the IA firm. So the responsibility, the onus is on us as insurance adjuster, field insurance adjuster, that is. And also there's a caveat to that. Um, most field adjusters are independent. But there are staff field adjusters where the liability and responsibility may shift legally. But as a field adjuster, it is your responsibility. Um, there's this story in Mississippi. Um, it was posted online in 2020. I kind of hesitate to um, switch screens because I'm afraid it's going to lag on me. So I'm just going to read this short story, okay? Give me a second here. All right. And it's about a field adjuster. Um, I'm going to try to withhold his name. But listen to this the story. It says, Mississippi has an answer. On April 16, 2020, the Mississippi Supreme Court recently ruled that an adjuster's safety was not the homeowner's responsibility as the homeowner exercised no control over the adjuster. Okay, we figure... No-brainer, right? All right, that's kind of, of a no-brainer. But listen to what happened where this, this ruling came from. It says, as a result of a storm, Mr. Peak's home sustained damage to the roof. Mr. Peak filed a claim with his insurance carrier, Allstate Insurance and Company. Allstate contracted with Pilot Catastrophe Services to inspect the evalu and evaluate the storm damage. Pilot assigned independent adjuster, and I'm going to call him John Doe, to Mr. Peak's claim. During the inspection of Mr. Peak's roof, John Doe fell through a rotted area of the roof decking and partially into the attic. John Doe sustained injuries to his neck, back, right hip, right arm, and both rotator cuffs in his shoulder. John Doe was unable to work for more than a year as a result of his injuries. And though he filed a claim with Pilot, this is the adjuster, and received workers' compensation benefits, John Doe also sued Mr. Peak, the homeowner, for failing to make the premises safe and for not warning him about the roof's condition. I know some of y'all probably think that's preposterous. How, why and how? Would the adjuster try to sue the homeowner? Well, he didn't. 
The trial court ruled in favor of John Doe, of the adjuster, on a motion for summary judgment. Mr. Pete then appealed to the Mississippi Supreme Court. In reversing the trial court, the Supreme Court found that John Doe was hired by Allstate to perform a specific task, identify and distinguish pre-existing roof damage from storm damage. The court relied upon the well-established, intimately connected doctrine and found that Mr. Pete did not exercise any control over the adjuster. The court held that absent from exercise of control over a contractor, Mississippi law does not impose liability on a property owner for injuries suffered by independent contractors arising from or intimately connected to the work they were contracted to perform. So back to the question, whose responsibility is it for our safety? It's you. It's you. Now, that, that's going to segue into my third question. Are field adjusters required to climb roofs, Robert? The field adjuster is definitely required to uh, climb roofs to locate the damages of uh, the storm, you know, hail, wind. Um, so we can go ahead and identify it right up in the estimate. So you can't inspect a roof off the side, off the eaves. There's been adjusters who has been just take pictures off the, the eaves. That's not a proper inspection. If you cannot get on top of a roof, it's too steep. There are other companies. Uh, Ladder Now is a, a company that you can call. Some uh, companies also pay for those uh, services and uh, you can go that route. But you definitely have to get on the roof to inspect the roof. Absolutely. Now, there's no way one around it. Somebody got to get on that roof. If you're going to be a field adjuster, that's no one or two ways around it. Now, I shared yesterday that um, it is possible for you to have someone with you who can climb the roof for you. However, that person has to be qualified to identify damage, whether it be hail damage, wind damage, mechanical damage, and to know how to photo document that damage. He doesn't have to be a, he or she does not have to be a licensed adjuster, but he has to be able to identify damage and be qualified to do that. And what I say qualified, meaning that person should have taken some kind of training in identifying damage. One of them that I recommend is hay, wind, and hell damage, how to recognize damage. So that's one way around it, but you got to get on the roof. And if it's impossible to get on the roof, you can justify an estimate by doing it from the eve like Robert recommended. All right, but definitely we have to get pictures and properly document that roof. What are some safety tips you think you can give, Robert, that you think that we can share or some um, ideas on how to prepare for an inspection? And um, what are some safety tips you think we can give them? Uh, well, safety tips to, uh, to obviously do, do any type of inspection, making sure you look at the perimeter of the house because you don't want to step in a hole that somebody had dug in the ground because I know that I've done that and the grass was higher and there's a hole there. So make sure what's your surroundings, first of all, if there's a branch, because instead of looking at the house at all times, you're walking and you're not looking down. Always make sure you're looking around and where you're stepping. I think uh, I think you lagged a little bit, Robert. I'm not sure if your uh, auditor came through. You might have to repeat that. Can you hear me now? Yes, the lag is gone now. Go ahead, if you don't mind repeating that. Basically, the safety tips as far as inspecting the house is going to the house and looking around the perimeter. Uh, there's been a hole in the ground that I've stepped in where the grass was higher, and I just focused on the house and not on the ground, making sure that uh, you're walking in areas that you're not going to either trip, fall, or if there's a ledge. Also, you know, making sure you put your ladder on the grass. Don't ever put it on concrete because concrete, it tends to sometimes if it's misty, foggy, 
you're going to you're going to slip that ladder will slip from the bottom of you especially if you're on a deck uh you don't want to ever put it on a deck because uh, the wood tends to uh, give way as well so i would never want to put it on a deck or concrete try to put it on the grass if possible All right now there are some situations where like you shared we may not have the convenience of the grass or mulch um, or dirt. Now, if you had to put it on concrete, I think you recommended yesterday, Robert, which I thought was an excellent idea. If you have to put on concrete, tie the bottom of a ladder to something that's stationary that'll prevent the ladder from kicking up out from underneath you. And if you have to, if you absolutely have to use a wood deck, um, one thing I would recommend is in between the two by fours or two by six, there's going to be a little spacing. I would set up my ladder in a way that I can either put my spatula that I use to lift up the shingle or a screwdriver, stick it through the slot and put the, the bottom legs of my ladder right up against it. That will prevent it from flipping up once you get to the top of the roof. But we absolutely try to discourage you from setting up on wood decks and concrete. Especially if you don't have any support. You know? Or find someone that it, that's going to come with you. That's going to be able to provide that extra, um, what do you call it, spot for you when you climb the ladder. Now one thing we encourage you to do before you even get to that inspection... Before you even schedule your inspection, look at the home on Google Maps or Google Earth. Um, see what the slope looks like. Make sure you see how many stories the house is. And if you feel uncomfortable with climbing that roof, insurance carriers will pay for ladder assist. I mean, there's, there's at least three companies I know that the insurance carriers would pay to be able to send a ladder assist out there with you to that inspection and they will climb the roof for you and they will take the pictures for you even though taking pictures is not really part of their contract but they will take the pictures for you so and we highly encourage you guys to get cougar paws i mean one of the biggest things that adjusters do we get complacent um, we climb so many roofs and we think that we're invincible, you know, or we may underestimate the slope of that roof and walk off the roof. It happens every time. One of the things that was shared in this court ruling, ruling I'm going to read it for you. It says, the justice face, <clears throat> excuse, me, excuse me, guys, the justice face a lot of dangers and challenges when inspecting property damage. They must remain vigilant and observe best practices for safety. Safety education and training during property damage inspection is an area ripe for attention. John Doe, his life changed quickly from one mishap. It only takes one mistake. And, and guys, if we don't take ladder safety serious, um, it only takes one mistake. It will alter your life. It will alter your life, and, and you don't want that. You definitely don't want that. Another question I want to throw in there, Robert. How about attic, attic inspections? How do you feel about that? Uh, I agree with going in an attic. Uh, I know you're <laughs> laughing because... Uh, but it depends uh, depends on what the attic is. If there's a deck and or the subfloor in the attic, then I would recommend going up in the attic, walk around in where when there's a subfloor. Don't try to attempt to walk on the rafters and go to certain areas because there's a lot of hidden uh, two by fours that you're not going to be able to see because of insulation. I agree with Ashley there. I don't recommend walking around the attic. If there's a subfloor where there's an air condition, you can just walk up there, take your photos, and then come back down. So I do recommend at least taking some photos of the decking. Amen. Amen. Dad, I agree with you 100%. I always discourage our students not to um, 
be walking around inside the attic because of that hazard. I mean, you hear stories all the time. Even public adjusters are falling through the roof, <laughs> through the mm. attic. I mean, there was one inspection I went um, to inspect, and I saw this huge hole in the ceiling, and they just screwed a four by eight pl- um, drywall. And I asked the insurer, I said, "What?" I said, "Is that damage from the storm?" And the homeowner said, "No, my public adjuster went through the ceiling." I mean, it's funny thinking about it, but man, when it happens to you, it's not funny at all. Um, so I definitely, what I would recommend, open up the attic access, go into the access, and don't walk around, because there's two concerns that I have. One is your safety, of course. Um, and number two, if there is damage to the wood deck, on the roof, if there's old stains or rotted wood, the carrier is not going to provide coverage for that because that establishes the fact that that's a pre-existing condition. And in addition, when we're replacing drywall ceilings, we're replacing insulation anyway. So it's like, what's the reason that we would walk throughout the entire attic, in my opinion, doesn't really serve a purpose. But definitely you want to take a picture of the roof deck and maybe just from the from the access just take three pictures all right right. and if you could see the area that was damaged from the attic access that's a plus that is a plus um osha regulations they regard attic access as a confined space and they have specific regulations for it and one of them is because the atmosphere may become unsafe. What do I mean by that? The lack of oxygen. All right? That's an atmospheric condition that may change. And, not, and in addition to that, how about the temperature? You know what I'm saying? So I kind of discourage, and you have some managers that tell, oh, yeah, crawl into the attic. You have guys that will tell you, go into the crawl space and, and you have to crawl underneath the entire home. I, I'm i not of that persuasion. I'm just not. Uh, Eddie had asked that question, of what about the crawl space? Uh, I, you can, depending on what type of the house it is, if there is a, a access for underneath the home, if... <laughs> I know that certain insurance companies want you to take photos from underneath because they want to take uh, additional photos of what needs to be done because the, you're not going to be able to see the damage from above, but you can see it from below because if there is wood that is delaminated or um, insulation that needs to be replaced, then you'd have to try to get to that area. I made a stick. Uh, with the wheels on the bottom of it, and I put a GoPro, and uh, with that with that it's safety done. stick, it's 40 foot long, and all I did is the wheels are, are four inches, and I rolled it all the way through, and the the GoPro just that's faced perfect. it up, and I t- and I took snapshots of it, so that's what I did. That's I didn't want to get underneath the house because all I saw was a whole bunch of spider webs. So if I stuck that stick in there, walked around the other side of the house shoved the stick in there and I took additional photos that needed to be taken and that's what I did so I didn't need to go uh, underneath the house yep that's perfect that's perfect man if you if you maybe later on can share a picture of that stick what it looks like yeah, that's the perfect idea you know get as much as you can from that access space as opposed to going up underneath there because we're insurance claims yeah. adjuster we're not home inspectors where those guys they put on an entire protective suit and they go up underneath there I mean, for right. me, there's there's a lot of reason why I would not crawl into a spot, uh, um, crawl space. One of those one of those reasons because the daddy daddy no legs or no arms, call snakes yeah. they hiss at you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I am not mm-hmm. going underneath there, no sir. I I have two two things that I put underneath, a real remote control car is what I have. The big ones that go up. And I put the GoPro on that one. And if, if there's too many pipes or anything like that, then I use the stick. But I have two things that I use. Awesome. 
Awesome. That's some good tips, Robert. I didn't even think of that. Holy smokes. No, good point. Good point. Um, do anybody have any other questions in the chat? Ah, you're more than welcome, Luscious Tate. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. But definitely, definitely. So the questions that we covered so far, why is ladder safety so important? Whose responsibility is it for our safety? Are field adjusters required to climb roofs? And what are some safety tips? And we also threw in the attic and the crawl space. We kind of threw that in for you guys. Because I know that that's a challenge for people to, to be able to go into the attic space. And you may be encouraged. Now, here's the thing. I want to I want to share this pretty quickly. There are some times that you're going to have managers that will encourage you to do something that puts your safety in jeopardy. I mean, just because managers or team leads or supervisor have that title, title does that mean that they can they can tell you to do something to put your life in jeopardy. For example, I had a student, well, a friend of mine who was doing some work in Canada. And if you ever worked in Canada, there's two-story homes everywhere. And his manager encouraged him to do a double pull. And I'm not going to tell you, I encouraged him not to, but he went ahead and did it and fell off the second story, hit the first story, and he managed somehow to get off the roof. And this was a couple of years ago. And to this day, he's still hurting. But his manager encouraged him to do it. His manager encouraged the entire team to do double pulls. That's a big no-no. If you're that determined as an adjuster to get on that two-story roof, carry two ladders. You know, different sizes if they have to be. But make sure you have a second ladder so that you're not doing a double pull. All right. And I mean, I, I could give you more story after story where managers or supervisors will encourage you to do something that puts your life in jeopardy. Remember, it's your responsibility as an insurance adjuster. Have you ever encountered such a thing, Robert? Uh, I always uh, try to do the safety for myself. Um, if somebody. <laughs> Ask me to do something that you're not comfortable with. Uh, just make, I, I've made a phone call to a ladder now to, to make sure that uh, they hip out with that. That's correct. That's correct. Good point. Good point. Well, we're not going to keep you guys any longer. Um, in closing, I just want to encourage and motivate you guys to get the proper training, ladder safety training, um, get the proper equipment, um, such as cougar paws, if if you want to learn how to climb high and steep roofs, get get the training, get the certification. Um, <clears throat> there's a guy in Georgia, Terry Freeland. All right, he that's the guy that I got my high and steep certification from. Awesome, awesome, awesome trainer. Matter of fact, I'm going to show his line his number in the chat. Um, he's out of Georgia, and he is an excellent, excellent high and steep trainer. So if you want to get to the get to an inspection and climb the roofs yourselves, his number is 770-365-0606. And I'm gonna put that in the chat. You remember Rob? You remember him, Robert? I think we did our high and steep training together, right? Yeah, we did. Was that in Georgia or South Carolina? No, that was in Georgia. Our deployment was yeah. in South Carolina. That was Hurricane Francis, I think it was. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that was Hurricane Francis. And while we was on standby, we was um, I think we had um, we stationed in Georgia. Because they wasn't sure where the storm was going to hit. And while we was on standby, we said, hey, why don't we just go do our high and steep certification? Definitely. Yeah. All right. 
And, that, and if you guys have been following us for any time, you also know that we provide adjuster training. Um, we have some online classes right now. And we're running a, we're running a one-week special. Well, each and every class is only $99. If you've looked at our at our courses before, you'll see that there was some on one fifty, one for some for three fifty. Well, all of them we're providing right now for between April first and April seventh. We're going to provide those classes for ninety nine, ninety nine, just for one week. All right, that's just a one week special. Um, the month of April, in my opinion, is a very <clears throat> how do you say it? conscientious month. Because mm -hmm. of um, Resurrection Sunday, you know, we celebrate, I hate to call it Easter, but we celebrate, you know, the resurrection of Christ. And yeah. it's, a, it's a very special month, especially for me. I mean, I don't know if anybody else is religious, but I'm grateful to God for the many blessings and opportunities that he provides me. And I know you guys can hear that I'm winded a little bit. I had a health crisis back in January where I went in for an outpatient procedure <clears throat> and I almost died, basically almost died. Um, and that procedure was stemming from shortness of breath. So I went in for a bronchoscopy, they sent the camera down my throat and I started bleeding profusely. And I could tell you it's only by the grace of God that I'm here today and, um, and I'm totally grateful, man. Totally grateful. And so I would just want to, we just want to run this special to make it affordable for you guys. Um, any one of those classes that you choose, it'll be $99.99 and you have a 30 day access to it. Okay, and I just want to throw that in there before we end. So, in closing, yeah, the, Robert, is there anything? There's, yeah, there's a question on, on there. What would exempt you from being an adjuster? What would exempt you? <clears throat> okay, and I can only speak for the state of Florida. There are certain felonies that if you've committed in your life, that totally eliminates you from being a jester. However, there is a timeline from those times that that felony was committed. For most of the ones that are tolerable for the state of Florida, I think there's a 10-year waiting period. Um, I can't pull it up right now, but... Uh, and I can't even pull up the list, the names of those um, felonies that would disqualify you from being an adjuster. But the ones that that are tolerable, I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for, for the crimes that are not capital offenses, there's a 10-year wait period before you can apply for an adjuster license. Also child support. That's child correct. support, I know, in the state of Texas, if you owe child support, then they would just say, okay, you, you, and they'll ask you, if, are you behind on it? Not just because you owe child support. If you're in the arrears, you probably won't get um, an adjuster's license. I know that. Yeah, that's correct. So I'm glad you asked. So if you had a felony on your record, doesn't disqualify you totally. There may be a wait time for you. So... Don't give up if you want to become an insurance adjuster. Just look up the rules and regulations and you'll find the answers that you need. All right. Let's see. Is there any other questions there? Uh, you're more than welcome. More than welcome, Florida Innocent. Now, is there anything else you want to leave them with, Robert, before we go ahead and close this out? Uh, no, not right now. Just the uh, main thing is be safe and uh, adjuster. Uh, being an adjuster is not only to for yourself to make good money. It's also, remember, it's to helping others is what uh, we're here for. Okay. Our website is severerpmsadjusters.com. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat. All right. You can go there for all the information on the online classes. 
Now, this is technically our first podcast. We tried yesterday, but I couldn't iron out the issue with the audio. I thought, I was pretty sure we had it today, but the problem we had today was the lagging that kind of zipped up my audio. Because I didn't really do anything different once we got it sorted out. <clears throat> but um, this is technically our first live podcast. There's going to be many more. We had planned to do these once a month, but but um, I don't know if I should say it, Robert. But Robert whispered in my ear and entertained the idea of doing it once a week. But right now we have plans for once a month, and we may go from once a month to once a week. And I'll talk talk with Robert about that. But there's so many topics to cover in this insurance industry. But we believe that the very first one that should be addressed is the entire thing of ladder safety. Because if you go out there and you take every advice we give you about insurance adjusting, but we do not talk about how to adjust safely, we've done you a disservice, you know, as trainers. If we can't tell you what is the most important aspect, which is you being able to go home alive and in one piece. When my students, and I've had students that shared with me that they've fallen off the roof, I mean, my stomach sinks. And it sinks because I say to myself, I know I made it a point to talk about ladder safety. And I'm thinking to myself, man, why did you take that chance when you knew better? So we as trainers will be doing you a disservice if we do not highlight and put the spotlight on ladder safety for you guys. Because if you don't feel comfortable climbing the roof, do not climb the roof. The money is not worth it. If you can spend it and enjoy it. So we wanted to make sure that we focused on ladder safety. And our next podcast, we're going to, I mean, there's a zillion things that we could talk about. Insurance adjusting and we hope that you tune in for more discussions and conversations about claims world Okay, so I just want to thank you guys for joining us Um, I'm your host Ashley Severe from Orlando, Florida and my brother from another mother (laughs) Robert Willers out of San Antonio You got it. You guys have a safe night and yes, we will talk about doing something and it could be a shorter podcast because if we do it weekly we want to go ahead and try to do a specific uh inspection or a specific item that uh, it comes up through the chat so definitely we'll talk to ashley see what time frames would be best for everybody to get on because we want to make sure everybody gets the knowledge to what we know uh and to give to you guys that's correct that's great. So again, thank you for joining us, guys. God bless you guys and be safe. And tune in next time. We will be advertising and posting the next time we go live. All right. So God bless you and thank you for joining us with Claims World. Have a good night. Good night.